Thank you. Thank you. story before, but I think it's uh, relevant to my ideas and feelings about Howard Dina. I was working at a an art supply store in the East Village called Utrecht, which has been absorbed into another giant art supply corporation, and uh, Dina came in one day and I recognized her because they had just recently written an article including her and about six or seven other artists calling them emerging artists so I talked to her and I said uh, gosh I saw that article about you being one of the up and coming emerging artists and Howard Dina kind of looked at me and said uh, gosh I've been here showing for 10 years now and they're still calling me emerging it's like uh, gosh every time I try to come out as an artist they just want to push me back up the birth canal and I just want to be born and get up and walk around and just be a regular artist now so uh, that was the kind of uh, spunky response that I appreciated Let's look at some of the work. This is titled Autobiography Fire. Sue T, 1986 to 1987, mixed media on canvas. Well, I was just glancing through the press release and they were talking about the fact that uh, I guess sometime in the late 70s that Howard Dino was in a pretty bad car accident and that she suffered a severe concussion that caused a lot of memory loss and uh, well they were saying that part of uh, this ongoing series, the auto autobiography series was a way for her to kind of reconstruct some of her memories. This is Autobiography Africa, Red Flag 2, 1986. So they were saying that uh, Howard Dina collages in postcards and photographs into some of these, and they were talking about her uh, 
material use of the paint and the building up the the texture, the impasto, and she says she kind of considers this part of uh, something like African scarification. Artemis, 1986, and I'm just glancing over the, the gallery list here, and it looks like all of these works are basically from the mid-80s. Also talking about the way that she kind of cuts up her canvases and then sutures them back together again. And that's, I guess, another reference to her healing from her accident. Now, I always uh, appreciated another body of work that she's pretty well known for, which was a, a body of work that she used uh, talcum powder and uh, the little dots, the little cut-out paper sections you get from a paper punch, and uh, she made a lot of works using those kinds of, uh, what could I say, ephemeral or kind of changeable mediums. They would be in boxes and you would look at them and sort of think, uh, Wow, if you shook that up and came back, it would look like a whole different painting or a different object. This is Autobiography Japan, Mountain Reflection, 1982-83. get into some of her paper dots. Uh, I'm just thinking if you were sitting in your studio thinking, gee, I need to use a lot of paper dots for my paintings that uh, you would end up spending a lot of time punching out all these holes. Also, we've got some uh, of the postcards in here that she's Paint it up a little bit. Also, I think that Howard Dean is finally starting to get some of the recognition. She's been a long-time presence here. She is right here. She's been a long-time presence in the New York scene. And like a lot of people, she's been hardworking and showing and uh, producing her work and uh, kind of going in and out of fashion every now and then but I think that they're paying more serious attention to her now thank goodness it's titled Autobiography India Shiva Ganji Mixed Media on Canvas Also, I'm thinking, uh, now that I stand back and look at some of these, that the, uh, the cut shapes of the canvases are a uh, pretty important part of how you perceive these pieces. I think one of the shows that really stuck with me and made me consider how important and uh, influential Howard Dina was is a show that happened about, gosh, I guess it's 10 or 12 years ago at this point called High Times, Hard Times, and I believe it was at the National Academy of Design. was curated by Katie Segal with the help of David Reed and 
and uh, it was a fantastic show because it kind of recontextualized and brought to the fore a bunch of experimental painting and painters that were working in the late 60s, early 70s, about the same time that uh, Soho was starting to take off. And uh, Howard Dina had a couple of, or at least I remember one very important painting that was uh, it's like little tubes of canvas that were sewed together and then they were linked together, kind of forming a an open grid that you could hang in the middle of the room and uh, kind of made me think that Howard Dino was really spending a lot of time thinking about what a painting was, why you would think something was a painting and something else might not be a painting. And in certain ways, the fact that a lot of these works are unstretched, almost more like uh, drawings or collages, I think kind of shows her experimental side, her kind of taking some risks. This is a grouping of pieces titled Autobiography Japan. Hiroshima Disguised, 1983 Mixed Media on Canvas. Okay, we'll get up and you can sort of see the, uh, not only the punched out paper dots, but also glitter and there might be some some talc in there, a lot of kind of uh, powders. And also, I think, uh, gosh, looking at a lot of these work, these works, there's a very uh, kind of sensual, decorative quality to a lot of this that. Uh, be very apparent if you were just looking at still photographs of this. It's titled Autobiography Oval, and I believe this is the oldest piece in the show. This is 1980-81. Uh, Media collage on paper. We're going to wrap up looking at this piece. Well, I appreciate what Garth Greenan is doing. We came down and saw the uh, Mark Greenwald show. six months ago and uh, well with Howard Dina I, I'm glad that there are people that are kind of reevaluating a lot of very important and influential artists this piece is titled Autobiography of Japan Sisendo Kyoto 1982 Mixed media 72 by 76. And again, we've got a lot of the uh, punched out paper dots. saw at least one or two of uh, Howard Dina's pieces in a show, I guess it was the summer of 2018, it's a multi-gallery show, um, 
painting now and forever, something like that. And I think that was kind of part of the whole rediscovering of Howard Dina Pendel. I think if you're lucky and you're a young artist, you get a chance to meet some wonderful, inspirational people. Maybe not a lot of them, but a few of them. And it's always wonderful to be able to kind of follow these people's careers over the decades. And uh, yeah, they always continue to inspire you. James Com reporting on Howard Dina Pendel autobiography here at the Garth Green and Gallery, 545 West 20th Street. You can like this, share, subscribe, recommend it to your friends, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. We only ask you to say thank you, Howard Dina, and thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you.